Hi there, Perfect Caster here and welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a great day. I've gotten a lot of requests for this, so in this video, I will show you how to play better bar chords. Now, even though this lesson is aimed primarily at beginner guitarists, intermediate players will also benefit from some of the things that I will discuss later in this video. If you're new to this channel, I invite you to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. I regularly upload content centered on music and the guitar, from lessons to gear demos to tour vlogs, performances, and all sorts of other fun stuff. Now, undoubtedly, no other chord has frustrated and discouraged countless beginning guitarists as much as the venerable F chord. In fact, a lot of failed guitar journey stories often start with being introduced to the F chord trying to learn it and get it clean for the next few weeks and quitting guitar entirely shortly thereafter. And there's a very good reason for that. The area in which the F chord is found in is the most difficult area of the guitar neck to start learning bar chords on. The frets in this area are the widest spaced. And since this is at one end of our string length, the string tension is also really tough to press down. So in this video, we will work on bar chords in the third fret to fifth fret areas of the neck. And as you get used to the bar chord form and your hand gets stronger, work your way down until you can play the first fret bar chord cleanly. Before diving into bar chords, I introduce my students first to power chords or root fifth chords. Power chords are basically the bottom part of a bar chord. So this helps establish our hand position. Plus they also share the same mechanics as bar chords. So the transition later on will be easy. Now we'll start playing our power chords using just two fingers, our index finger and our third finger. Okay, let's take our index finger and lay it across all six strings. Lightly, don't press down yet. That way you mute all the strings. And then we're going to press down on the third fret of the sixth string. So you are only pressing down on your fingertip, but not with the underside of your index finger. Okay. Make it so that when you strum across all six strings, only the lowest string rings out. And then from here, we're going to take our third finger and place it on the fifth fret of the fifth string. Press that. And that is our basic power chord. Sixth string, third fret, fifth string, fifth fret. And the rest of the strings are still muted by the underside of our index finger. With this hand position, we are actually bending one of the very first rules that we are given when we start playing guitar, which is to play the strings just with our very fingertips and try to avoid touching the neighboring strings. In this case, we are bending that rule slightly just for our index finger so that we can mute the other strings that we don't need. It's also important to position your thumb in between those two fingers. Don't position your thumb back here or over here. Okay, so in between. And if I peek my thumb up, you will see that it is in between those two fingers. Not here, not here. Now for this power chord shape, we are naming it after the lowest note, which is the note on the sixth string. So third fret, sixth string is a G note, and that makes this a G power chord. Now, if you don't know how to find the notes on the guitar neck yet, click on the card above to watch the first of my Music Theory for Guitarists video series. So next, let's practice moving this shape around. So we are going from the third fret G, and move it up to the fifth fret A. Okay, so we are going from a G power chord to an A power chord. Notice that when I shift chords, I move my hand entirely. Try not to reach for the next chord with just your fingers like this. In fact, instead of thinking about moving your fingers to grab the next chord, 
think about moving your thumb along the back of the neck. Because when you move your thumb, the whole hand moves along with it. Another way to practice this is to come up with power chord versions of chord progressions that you already know. For example, D, A, G, A. So this is a D power chord. A, G, A. Or, <laughs> Next up, let's talk about shifting to a different set of strings. So let's take our G power chord. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull down both fingers so that we land on the next set of strings. So in this case, the fifth and fourth strings. Okay. The underside of my index finger still lays slightly across the other strings, muting them. And we are just letting the notes on the fourth and fifth strings ring out. Okay. Now that we have moved to the fifth and fourth strings, we will need to mute the sixth string. And that will be taken care of by the very tip of our index finger. Push it up slightly so that you end up touching the sixth string. And that will be enough to mute it. So even if you strum all six strings, only the fourth and fifth strings will ring out. If you leave the sixth string unmuted, it will obscure the sound of the power chord that you're playing. See, not good. So mute it. Now in this position, we will be naming the power chord after whatever the note is on the fifth string. So third fret, fifth string is a C making this a C power chord. And if we move up two frets, this is a D, this is a D power chord. And if we move up some more, E, E power chord, and so on and so forth. Okay. Now let's work on moving from the sixth string power chord to the fifth string power chord. So G, And then pull both fingers down at the same time so that you land on the next pair of strings and then play the C power chord. Now to go back to the G chord, you push both fingers up. Okay, so this is the movement. Don't try to move them one at a time. Move them simultaneously. Now let's try playing our earlier chord progression, D, A, G, A. So D, A, G, A. Or you can also play. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop now. Now when you're used to the two finger power chord shape, let's take it a step further and add the pinky. So for the G power chord, we have our first and third fingers on the third and fifth fret respectively. Now we're gonna add our pinky onto the fifth fret of the fourth string. Okay, so that's a fuller sounding power chord. We're still muting the other strings that we don't need. Okay, using the underside of our index finger. And to go to the fifth string version, we are going to pull all three fingers down to the next set of strings. So this time we are at the fifth string, third fret, fifth fret, fourth string, fifth fret, third string. Okay. And this is, of course, our C power chord. Then spend some time practicing shifting between those two shapes. Okay, now that we're comfortable with the power chord shape and mechanics, let's transition to full bar chords. Okay, so let's take our G power chord. And then we are going to add our second finger, our middle finger. And we're going to place that on the third string, fourth fret. Okay. 
Now to complete the bar cord, we are going to pull our hand back so that the base of our index finger presses down on the first and second strings. And that is your full bar cord. Now when I pulled my hand back, I'm actually using the weight of my whole arm to help the index finger press down on the strings. So that way I am playing the bar chord with my entire arm, not just my index finger and thumb. And that's a common mistake for those learning bar chords for the first time. They try to mash the strings down by pinching with the index finger and the thumb. And I don't care how strong you are, this pinching motion is not enough especially if you have to play an entire song consisting of bar chords. So again, to recap, play the G par chord, add the second finger, pull your hand in so you play the first and second strings. Okay. I already mentioned that this is the major bar chord form. To turn this into a minor bar chord form, we are going to take off our middle finger and make sure that our index finger plays the top three strings. Now in the beginning, you can also use your middle finger to brace against the index finger to help the notes ring out a little more clearly. Although later on, once your hand gets stronger, you shouldn't feel the need to do that. Now I do have to point out one more thing. When I play a bar with the index finger, I don't actually use the underside of the finger, but rather I roll it towards the nut a little bit. This way, I avoid the creases of my finger joints and use this part of the finger. If I take that minor chord again earlier and use the underside of my index finger, and if I play the third string, you can hear it's a little fuzzy. And as soon as I roll my index finger towards the nut, it cleans up. That's because the string is right under the crease of my well, middle joint. So rolling it to the side presses it down nice and clean. Now I can't stress enough the importance of using your arm's weight to pull your hand in when playing a bar. A common mistake that beginners make is they actually push their hand out to straighten up their index finger when playing a bar. And this does not work because you want to press the strings towards the fingerboard. And if you're pushing your hand out, you're actually moving away from the fingerboard. So what you want is to direct all your force in the right direction. Now, one way to ensure that you're using the weight of your arm to play your bar chords is to release your thumb and do your best to press down and make each note ring out clearly. That way when you add your thumb, you don't have to squeeze as hard to get a clean sound. And try that with the minor chord too. And finally, ensure that your fretting arm is hanging loosely by your side. You don't need to raise your elbow, you don't need to hike up your shoulder, and you don't need to push your hand out like that. See, it looks really uncomfortable. So relax the shoulder, relax the elbow, and pull your hand in. Now let's move on to the bar chord that's based on the fifth string. This time around, we're going to start with the minor form first because all we need to do is take the major chord form that's based on the sixth string and pull everything down by one string. So now we are on the fifth, fourth, third, and second strings. Okay, And that is your minor bar chord form based on the fifth string. In this case, this is a C minor bar chord. Okay, And again, pull your hand in so that the base of the index finger plays the first string. Okay. To go back to G major, push everything up one string. Go to C minor, pull everything down one string. 
Now the major bar chord form based on the fifth string is another difficult shape for beginners because we need to bunch up our second, third, and fourth fingers on one fret. So in this case, we, they all need to be on the fifth fret, okay? So second finger on the fourth string, third finger on the third string, fourth finger on the second string, all on the fifth fret. And then from here, the index finger needs to reach back and play the third fret on the fifth and first strings. Okay. Now notice that I'm not holding my index finger straight like this. Okay. It's all right to have a slight curve as long as you're still covering the frets that need to be played. So in this case, the third fret fifth string and the third fret first string. And my index finger tip is still muting the sixth string. So now this is a C major bar chord. If I move it up two frets, it becomes a D major bar chord. If I move it up two more frets, it becomes an E major bar chord. Now another way to play this bar chord shape is to take our third finger and straighten out the first joint so that you are back bending it. And this way you will be able to bar with the third finger. Okay, so let's take our third finger, place it on the fourth string, okay? And then back bend it at the tip joint so that you're covering strings two, three, and four. And then we're gonna put our index finger bar in place. Okay. Now, if you have double jointed fingers, you can probably back bend it some more so that you can clear the first string. Okay. I'm not double jointed, so I generally just mute the first string. Okay. That's enough of the chord to hear anyway. Now this alternate bar chord form is handy in the higher registers because the frets are closer together and it'll be difficult to bunch three fingers on the same fret. So now this is your E major bar chord. We can go up to F, we can go up to F sharp, we can go up to G and so on and so forth. You can also go down D, C, B flat, now I'm going to take our earlier chord progression, D, A, G, A, and play it using full bar chords. So D, A, G, A, D. Okay. I'll just add one more chord. Uh, D, A, B minor. Now let's try another way. D, A, B minor, G, D. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. Even with the help of our arms weight in playing bar chords, they can still be painful, especially if you have to play an entire five minute song consisting purely of bar chords. So here's a few more tips for endurance and managing hand tension for those marathon bar chord songs. Now, since the start of this video, I've been advocating pressing only the strings that you need to play. And that means my index finger hasn't been mashing on all the strings every time I play a bar chord. I only press down on the strings that the index finger needs to play. So let's take our G major bar chord. Okay. If I take off fingers two, three, and four and play the strings that I took them off from, they will be muted. Revealing that my index finger is only pressing the sixth string, the second string, and the first string. Okay. So the whole time I'm playing this bar chord, I am resting this part of my finger. Because there's no point in me pressing down on this part of my index finger when the notes sounding out are played by these fingers. So that helps you with endurance. So it's not mash everything and then add, <laughs> add the fingers. Uh, this is really tense. Now same principle applies to the fifth string bar chord form. 
Take off fingers two, three, and four. Those are muted. First and fifth strings are not. So it's not. And then add these three. Uh, that hurts. Press only the strings that you need to. Now the next tip involves managing hand tension. So let's say I'm going from a G bar chord to an A bar chord. Okay. In the time that it takes me to shift from G to A, I release the tension from my fingers so that my hand is reset as far as tension goes. Now a good way of thinking about it is that every time I release the tension, I empty my hand. So it's a full reset. So you can think of it as press, release, press again, release, press, release. Okay. Now here's a drill that you can do to get used to emptying your hand whenever you release the chord. Now let's strum quarter notes with the strings muted. One, two, three. And then we're gonna press down on the chord every other strum. Press, release, press, release. Now when you release the tension, don't take your fingers off of the strings. Another good way to think about it is you press and then you stop pressing. So press, stop, press, stop, press, stop, press, stop. Now let's practice that with a chord change. So the release will happen as you're traveling from one chord to the next. So G. Release, 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 okay. Now practice that shifting between two different bar chord forms as well. So in this case, we're gonna go from G to C, okay. So G, shift release, shift release, shift release. Now let's take it a step further and apply that press and release exercise to a specific rhythm. In this case, we'll use the Bo Diddley beat, which is da, 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 down, up, down, down, down. And what we'll do is we'll keep our hand in the empty mode for the most part and press only on the accents. So. Now let's add a chord change. Let's go from G to C. So one, two, three, go. G, 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 C. Okay, there you have it. That is my lesson for better bar chords. Now, if you have any other bar chord tips, feel free to share them in the comment section below. As always, please give this video a thumbs up, like, share it with your friends, and do subscribe if you haven't yet. Until next time, stay safe and take real good care of yourselves. Now go grab your guitar and get those bar chords nice and clean sounding. Practice makes perfecto.